Hi, this is Helen from crystalsandcrochet.com. Today I would like to show you how I make a magic ring and how I secure it to make sure it never ever comes undone. Okay, so I'm using Starcraft Special Double Knitting Yarn and I am going to use a 4mm Clover Amour crochet hook. Okay, so make sure you leave yourself a nice long tail and then very simply we go around the finger and cross over. Use your second and third finger to hold the yarn. Not too tightly because you need to be able to get your hook under that first loop over the second one, pull through, pick up your yarn and pull through to create a slip stitch. Okay, let me show you again. Over your finger, round, cross over and hold between your second and third fingers. Okay, hook under the first loop, over the second loop, pull through, pick up your yarn and pull through. And there's your magic ring. And do one more time. Over your finger, all the way round, cross over, hold it between your second and third finger hook under the first loop, over the second loop, pull through, pick up your yarn, pull through. Okay, that's your magic ring. Notice that the tail end wraps around almost as if you're starting to form a knot. Leave that like that. And as you work, you're going to work over this tail end as you work around the circle. Okay, so just to show you how I secure it as well, we need to make ourselves 12 double crochets. Just a really basic um, circle I'm going to show you here. So this um, is... A a chain start so for a double crochet I work in US terms so a double crochet is the equivalent a chain three so yarn over into your circle working over both of those yarns threads of yarn pick up a loop pull through yarn over through two yarn over through two okay as you first start, it's a little bit fiddly and sometimes the circle can flick around a bit. So I tend to put my second finger through the loop or pinch between my thumb and second finger. Okay, you'll also notice that I hold my hook in a pencil grip. And I use my second and third fingers to keep the yarn in place. Helps to keep my tension even. Stops the yarn sliding up and down the hook too much. You will also notice that I tend to flick my working yarn over my hook. That's an old knitter's habit. There's no right or wrong way to do any of this. It's just about what feels comfortable to you and how you can work to maintain neat, even tension as you work around any project that you're making. Okay, let's see where we're at. So the first chain three 
counts as a double crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Look at that, spot on. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this up out of the way. Now we want to close the magic ring. So just pinch on those last couple of stitches, take the tail end and pull. Okay, you don't need to close it all the way up yet, but just most of the way. Okay, and now I'm going to show you another little trick. When you are joining, particularly to the top of a chain start, with a slip stitch, it's often very difficult to get under those two top loops because you want that to sit like that so that the top of the stitch looks exactly the same as the others. So the trick is take a hook one and a half to two sizes smaller than your working hook. So I've been working with a four mil. So here is a two and a half mil. So pull that right down. And then I need to go under these two loops here. So you can see with a smaller hook it's very much easier to get under those two loops quite comfortably. Pull the yarn through, through the other loop, give it a little, little wiggle and it's nice and tight. And I'm just going to pull that right up out of the way. Okay, so you can see that my circle is cupping slightly and that's just because I haven't pulled this up enough. Okay, so what we're going to do is thread the end onto a yarn needle. Now, if you're right-handed, the flow of the yarn will go under the stitches in a clockwise direction. If you are left-handed, it will go anti-clockwise. So to begin with, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to work clockwise around the circle. So we can see where the tail end of the yarn is coming out from under the stitches here. So I'm going to go in under the stitches and work about halfway around the circle. And just pull that through and pull nice and tight so that you close that center up completely. Okay, so we're going clockwise around because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you'll be going anti-clockwise. This is the trick that stops this circle coming undone. You can see where the tail end is coming out from under this stitch. We're going to go one stitch back and then keep going under those stitches in the same clockwise direction. Okay, so we've now come full circle and we're going to reverse that and go back again. So again, come over one stitch. And around. Come back one stitch and around. Now reverse it again over one stitch and around. If you work fairly tightly you'll need to give a little wiggle and a jiggle. Okay back one stitch and around. 
So you've gone all the way round once, back, and back again for a third time. Now finally come over one stitch and just go back through a few stitches take that tail end cut it as close as you possibly can and if we wiggle and jiggle and pull as hard as we can you can see that tail end is not coming out so from the back the only part of the join that we can see is just where we've looped over those stitches and that's where we've caught the yarn in so it's not going to just slide straight back round underneath the stitches from the front we've got a nice even circle we can't see anywhere that we've joined okay and then we can just carry on working as normal through the rest of that circle okay so that's how I make my magic ring and how I secure the ends so that they never ever come undone thanks for watching